Good evening to Zelda Speedruns. Welcome to what is one of the hypest races, community races, we have done in quite a while. It's been a while since we had a proper community race, and we actually start with the big one today. Tonight, we have the first restreamed race of the new Skyward Sword tech, which is the reverse bit magic, which changes Skyward Sword from a very hard and not really glitch heavy game to an absolute fantastic glitchy experience. Without further ado, let's actually switch over to the layouts and let's say hi to my commentator for today. And that's one legend from a DSS community himself, Mr. Indy Kenobi. Yo! Hello, thanks for having us. Yeah, so. This harp race, I think we actually did a community race of this a few months ago. This one's going to look quite different. So it's been an exciting week for Skyward Sword speedrunning as we've found a new application of back in time called Reverse Bit Magic. And it's relatively complicated to explain, but the short version is we can take flags from Skyloft and apply them to other areas. And this lets us trigger things much earlier than they would otherwise be triggerable. So we're going to be able to see that during this run. There was actually a new application of reverse bit magic found about two hours ago. I don't know if any of our runners will do it. Uh, so we'll find out. But if not that, we have at least two other reverse bit magics that we'll see. I'm probably going to start abbreviating reverse bit magic as RBM because reverse bit magic is a bit of a mouthful. So I think we're just waiting for the runners to start here. Yeah, we're just waiting for one more runner to start. We're actually six people today. Right, six? Seven people today. Biggest SS rate of all time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not yet. Close. It's pretty close. Yep. Um... But yeah, um, only waiting for one more, and once that's ready, um, once he's ready, we'll start. Um, we'll swap in the other racers every once in a while to show all seven. And whoops, we're ready to go. All right, I'm excited. So. The major uh, glitch technique in Skyward Sword is back in time. And to activate back in time, the first thing our runners will have to do is uh, die. And it's actually very difficult to die at the beginning of Skyward Sword. It's like they thought that through or something. So the first thing you're going to see our runners do once they get out of the Knight Academy here is save at a statue and then jump off a bridge. And they have to jump off a bridge three times total in order to die. And then once they die, they're going to choose to continue and then reset the game immediately after choosing to continue. And this puts them with control of Link, but on the title screen version of Skyloft. So they can control Link on the title screen, essentially, which gives them access not only to Skyloft, but also all their save files. So there are a few different things you can do with back in time. There's bit saves and bit warps, which essentially allow you to teleport to different places. There's bit magic, which is a way of taking flags from your files and applying them to the bit skyloft to do things like open gates. And then there's also the reverse bit magic, which is doing as it sounds, the reverse of bit magic and applying flags from Skyloft to other maps. The first thing we're going to see is a bit save. Well, the first thing we're going to see is text. And we can see there's some... Uh, Deesh is rocking the Spanish here. Um, you can see how much slower that text is than the Japanese version that our other runners are showing off right now. <laughs> <laughs> How slow is this text? Holy Anna. Woo. Yeah, so this is why Japanese is the preferred version for speedrunning this game. 
over the course of this abbreviated harp speedrun, Japanese text will save about five minutes. <laughs> the run on Japanese, by the way, is just a little over an hour. That's our estimate here. All right, so um, I just found out if you all follow Scarlet Sword speedrunning, you will all know that usually uh, on Japanese, folks are just getting the practice sword these days. Because as we actually found out, after years of people doing got a statue early or got a sword early that getting practice sword is actually faster in hard percent it's not so we are dying again and the reason it's not faster in hard percent is because harp speedruns can skip the sailcloth but in order to skip the sailcloth you need to create what's known as a corrupt file a corrupt file is a file that has no data in it and is created by deleting a file and then saving while that file is deleting and so you're going to see our, uh, Jim is the closest one to doing this, but he copied file one into file two. That is in preparation for deleting file two and then saving at a statue. And that will create the corrupt file. The reason the corrupt file is useful is because it has no data, it also has no hearts. So as soon as you load a corrupt file, Link will die. And that is a fairly easy way to activate back in time. So you'll be able to catch a glimpse in file two there. You can see there's sort of a, just a smear where the name would be. The name's actually empty, but the smear is like the little glow that normally appears behind the name. So this bit save teleports them to the safe statue that they started at, but we're in a special version of Skyloft called Bit Skyloft. And certain things in Bit Skyloft aren't loaded, namely, the barrier preventing entry to the goddess statue. And so our runners, after doing this bit save, can run right into the goddess statue and grab the sword. You'll also notice just sort of basic movement techniques here. Our runners are gonna try and roll as often as possible. Every roll you do saves a frame. And you'll also notice them trying to kill their momentum as they go through loading zones. Because what momentum you take into a loading zone is carried through to the other edge of the loading zone. So if you're sprinting through a loading zone, there's actually a short little cutscene of Link sprinting out the other end of the loading zone. And during that little sprinting cutscene, you don't have control of Link. Whereas if you kill your momentum going through a loading zone, you get control of Link right away. The easiest way to kill Link's momentum is to actually go into first-person mode right before you hit the loading zone. Alright, so now it's time, I guess, to rescue the Loft Ring, right? Yep, we're heading over towards the Waterfall Cave. We need to talk to Groos first, um, in order to trigger the Loft Ring to appear in the cave. And then normally what you're supposed to do is go back for the Practice Sword because the Waterfall Cave is blocked by the logs, but since we got the early Goddess Sword, we can go straight from Groose to the cave. One thing you may have also noticed is when they got the Goddess Sword, there were a couple of cutscenes that played, and then as soon as they left the Goddess statue, you got a cutscene with Zelda. That cutscene is supposed to be the first thing you see, the first thing you really do but we get it leaving the statue because that trigger is not loaded in bit Skyloft. There he is, our lovely Loft Ring. Yep. We get a little vision of him or something. I don't know, maybe Link's psychic. Which is kind of, I was about to say, which is kind of weird, because afterwards you have just to, like, go through a freaking maze for like a minute. One interesting note about this waterfall cave, the movement through here is a little bit tricky to get down. And one of the new uh, tricks using reverse bit magic requires you to maneuver through this cave while in back in time. So you're not only juggling your stamina management, you're also trying to not like select or start a file that you're not supposed to. So Zelda here is hearing voices, which is always a good sign.
You'll also notice that our three runners on the Japanese version are already at the loft wing. And Dish on the Spanish version is talking to Zelda for the first time. I personally run the English version of this game and it has the same tech speed as Spanish and all the other non-Japanese languages. So I can understand the pain of the slower text. So we have a little uh, loft wing tutorial here telling us how to fly on the loft wing. This is kind of an uh, auto scroller kind of thing. You just have to scroll through the text boxes as soon as, as soon as you can while you're flying. But you also have to do enough of the flying moves that Zelda's talking about to actually trigger the second half of the tutorial. And this is where the harp route starts to deviate from any percent. Oh, Gymnast got some good hits in on Zelda there. So in any percent, what we would normally do here is the side hop cutscene skip and then enter the wing ceremony. Our runners are going to save and quit to do the sailcloth skip. And this is why we needed the corrupt file, because the only way to activate back in time at this point is to exit to the menu and use the corrupt file to die. And you can see Gymnast dying immediately after loading that file. This back in time is going to be another bit save to get to uh, the bit version of Skyloft and we're going to re-enter the goddess statue to place the emerald tablet. We actually got the Emerald Tablet back when we got the sword, but if we place the Emerald Tablet right away, then the Loft Wing disappears and we can never escape Skyloft. We're stuck on the rock in the sky forever. Well, that seems like a really poor application of like a save file. Hey, let's load the save file just to die. Great idea. <laughs> it's surprisingly useful. <laughs> so you'll notice that uh, both Jim and Jace have bonked a tree. Uh, by bonking that tree with the file's specific setup that we have, we can open the gate leading to the Upper Academy statue. And that's a few seconds faster than the alternate method, which is running halfway off that bridge, voiding out, and then getting placed there by a cutscene. Um, this is also why they copied file 1 to file 3, because they can now do this any time they go into back in time. It's that specific file that has the right flag set. That particular version of that trick is has been called modified bit magic because it's a modified version of loading that particular gate opening flag into back in time. All right, so we're almost done with Skyloft here. For harp runs, there's actually a little flexibility in what you want to do next. The default is to skip through these cutscenes, grab the adventure pouch, and pick up a shield on the way to the surface. But you can also choose to do another bit save here that will skip the adventure pouch and let you go straight to the surface. It's not much faster. In fact, it may not be faster at all with Japanese text. I'm not completely sure of that. Um, but it also locks you out of using anything um, that resides in your pouch. So you couldn't use a potion, you couldn't use a shield. That makes the run a little bit harder, but as you'll see, there's not a whole lot to this run anymore that actually requires a potion or a shield. It doesn't look like any of our runners are skipping the adventure pouch, except maybe TLO. I think TLO is doing the adventure pouch skip. Is it not worth it, or why are like? Jim did just run by the guy who gives you the shield, so he's at least skipping that. Jace is picking up that shield. I'm again. I'm not sure with the Japanese text, which one is faster. 
Um, I know on the English version it's a little bit faster to skip the adventure pouch because there's you're skipping all these text boxes that you're seeing on Jace's yeah. screen right now. Um, it may not be worth it for the Japanese version. All these They're... safety strats. Jesus, folks, I'm disappointed. I want to see all the magic and all the health. Come on. Uh, TLO has gotten the infinite void out here because he, he he made a little mistake with what he was doing if you were looking closely he saved and started his file at the same time that does what's called a bit warp and that changes your coordinates on the map to where you were saved he was saved at a save prompt so he ended up out of bounds what he wanted to do was actually a bit save which is saving the file and then starting it luckily uh, it doesn't make that much of a difference because when you bit warp, you end up with a bit saved version of that file anyway. So all he had to do was reset, reload the file, and then he can head to the surface. All right. Health management is a very important part of Skyward Sword speedrunning. Uh, these Deku Babas here can be manipulated so that you don't get hit by them, which is important because in skipping the sailcloth, we've made it so that we cannot quickly travel to the bottom of this pit without taking four hearts of damage, as Gymnast just did. So if you get hit by those Deku Babas, you actually have to run partway down the spiral so that you don't die from fall damage. Totally RB, uh, heart percent is actually a shorter version, like a actually a good race category of the game. Uh, which is uh, running the game all the way until you get the harp, the goddess harp, in uh, Lenayu Desert after the third dungeon. So you pretty much do three dungeons and get the harp, and that's the end of the run. A little shorter than the any percent run, but I'm yes. really sure with the new tack that we're gonna do a any percent community race really, really, really soon. Soon, I hope. And yeah, Din, the reason we don't use the sailcloth is because we skipped it. So we can't. In any percent, yes, you could just use the sailcloth if you happen to take damage on the Babas. And yeah, Harp used to be do the first three dungeons of the game. It's still technically do the first three dungeons of the game. But as you'll see, it's not an accurate description anymore. Yeah, well... That's foreshadowing, by the way. <laughs> by the way, Indy, when is um, rerouting 100% with reverse bit magic? I have some ideas. Oh, you really? <laughs> it's going to take a long time. <laughs> Actually, the most annoying part of routing 100% now is going to be that you have to get all the heart containers. All right, so Gymnast grabbed the revitalizing potion. You'll probably see Jace grab it as well. But since TLO skipped the adventure pouch, he won't be able to pick up that bottle. Or rather, he he can pick it up, but it will get sent to item check because he does not have an open pouch slot. <laughs> this is one of the most difficult parts of the run, actually placing the beacon on the map correctly. There's two strats for this, actually. You can either zoom in and then place the beacon, or you can try to be swag and place it without zooming, as Jim just did. And he succeeded. By the way, I just remembered um, a question I had beforehand. Um, so Jim already did like one run of the any percent route. Is he done yes. like with examining flags of reverse bit magic that you can set in Skyloft, or is there like more that he theorized but couldn't find yet? So, Jim and some others have spent, you know, the past five days cataloging as many flags in as many areas of the game as we could. So we have a pretty good understanding of all the Skyloft flags that are feasible to set using uh, revert reverse bit magic and we have we know what they correspond to in the other maps so probably most of the major skips have already been found uh, there are a few uh bits that were missing from the skyloft table 
One of them in particular is uh, bit 704. If we could find a way to set that flag on Skyloft, we could open the door to Hylia's realm from the past sealed temple, and that would skip the Song of the Hero and Skykeep and the bow and save roughly 70 minutes. That's the ideal, but we haven't been able to find that flag on Skyloft yet, so we don't really know. As of right now, at least, that's not possible. But there are still be things being found with reverse bit magic. Like I mentioned at the start, there was a new trick or new application found just two hours ago. Uh, I don't know if any of our runners will use it, but that one's an Earth Temple, so I'll point it out when we get there. Oh, sick. Yeah. It wasn't SVA that found it, it was someone named Azer. A Z E R. Shout out to AZ. Yes. It's. So, one thing you'll notice about the back in times in this game, they're actually kind of slow to do, right? It takes about a minute to do something like a bit warp or similar. And uh, reverse bit magic is no different. So, um, a reverse bit magic trick has to save a pretty significant chunk of time if it's actually going to be faster. And so this this newest application of skipping the boulder in Earth Temple is going to look really cool and seem like it saves a lot of time, but it actually maybe saves 10 to 15 seconds. Just because the bit ma the reverse bit magic itself takes so long to do. This section of the uh, run, the Fair and Woods section, is actually exactly the same as it used to be. Um, we have to collect all the Kikwis so that we can speak to the Kikwi Elder and get the Slingshot, and the Slingshot will gain us access to the Deep Woods and Skyview Temple. Um, as far as what the potential is for this, uh, this Harp category now, Keitsu has done a run that got a 103. Uh, that was just a couple days after RBM was found. It's possible that sub 1 could happen, but it would be pretty difficult with current strats right now. That's our best understanding of it at the moment. And keep in mind, this glitch is still less than a week old, so... Everything we're saying here with regards to timing and possible time saves is still very nebulous, right? This is going to change over the next couple weeks as we, you know, really hammer out the route in particular for any percent. So this Kikwi's name is Machi. Um, all the Kikwi's are named after different types of tea. So we have Machi here, we have Ulu later on, we have Erla. We have Lopsa, and then uh, my favorite Kikwi is one that will not be appearing in this run, but the Hermit Kikwi's name is Yerbel. At least on the uh, English version. Yeah, task tools for this game are to my understanding, difficult to work with. Um, there have been short sections of tasks done by Venic, um, but a full game task is sort of infeasible with the current tools available to us. What, what is so bad about using Dolphin? Uh, I don't personally use it myself. My understanding is that the Motion Plus doesn't work super well with Dolphin at the moment. Oh yeah, um, yeah, I just remembered something. That was actually, actually like uh, a thing on a to-do list of uh, one of the old guide of Skyrim Sword, and then it didn't happen for several reasons that I don't really need to talk about right now. Yeah. Um. So yeah, mo movement is the other big... So health management I talked about a little bit already. Movement is the other big part of Skyward Sword speedrunning. In such a long run, uh, better movement can save a lot of time. 
And so you'll see them rolling as much as possible. They want to roll into cutscenes as they run out of stamina because most cutscenes will restore your stamina. Um, in Elden, we'll see something called stutter sprinting, which is a way of sort of extending the distance that your stamina bar can take you. There's a different movement technique called break sliding, which is essentially an extended super slide or Skyward Sword's version of one. Um, that will actually not appear in this run as it has been obsoleted. Wait, there's no break sliding in this run? Not in a harp run. This it's sucks. Been I'm sorry. That's like it's still, no. it's still in any percent. It's no. still in any percent. No, Indy, I refuse. You can't just like get rid of of break sliding. That's like no, no. I, I mean, no. What can I say? It's just, <laughs> it's gone. No. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could just break slide in a random place just to have it in the run. Jesus. Just remove but the break. The break slide across the sink sand is out of this run. Oh, oh man. humanity. What happened? I know. Oh. I mean, th this used to be a pretty, you know, like, chill speed game, you know? You just sort of run through the game, you go fast, maybe occasionally you hit the title menu. Now we're just writing flags everywhere we can. Seems like a Zelda game. Yeah, this is what happens. Tough break. I see what you did there. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Classic Din. Oh, look at Jim here. So, doing the backward. Sorry, go Sorry, ahead. that was TLO doing the backwards fine strats there. So, Jim's found all the kickweeds. He's on his way back to the Elder to pick up the slingshot. Yes, that's true. We we do break slide over a hundred percent of the sand that we cross. Yes, this run is including the reverse bit magic tech. Ace, you're not helpful. You're toying with my feelings. <laughs> Gotta be nice to Trez. He takes a lot of abuse in the randomizer streams. Exactly. I'm on life support right now. We we in the Skyward Sword community are very welcoming and kind. So yes, if you've just joined, this is a harp speedrun to uh, obtain the Goddess Harp. The Goddess Harp is the reward for beating the third, what is normally the third dungeon in the game, Lanayru Mining Facility. The reason this category exists is because the any percent speedrun uh, when this game first came out was over six hours long. Uh, so we needed a shorter category if we wanted to do any sort of reasonable race. And harp at the time was roughly a two hour category. So it seemed like a reasonable uh, shortening of the run. Uh, with the new glitch that was recently discovered, this run is much, much shorter. Also, any percent is even shorter, but yeah. Yes. Any percent has actually shortened up enough now that it has passed Spirit Tracks. Uh, <laughs> Spirit Tracks is now the longest any percent run for a Zelda game. <clears throat> oh well. That game could use some optimization, I guess. That game could use anything. It's not Please bad. Give Please give Spirit Tracks a trick. I like Spirit Tracks. I ran it for quite a while. Yeah, Spirit Tracks is great, but it could use some optimization, like some tricks. <laughs> yeah. So let's look at Jim's stream here. He's about to try the extending blow. And he did not get it, unfortunately. So he's going to do the backup strat. The extending blow is a trick where you can perform a final blow off of a Bokoblin that the game thinks is dead. And so the game has zeroed out its information, which sends you flying to the origin point on the map's coordinates. Uh, Jim's going to use the cube warp here as a backup strat. Cube warp is uh, 
sort of the standard any percent back up here. There's actually a bit warp that you can do for harp, which is slightly faster as a backup strat. But it's possibly a five second difference, so there's nothing wrong with doing the cube warp here. The extending blow is a little bit random because we, in order to get it to work, the Bacoblin has to land on the very edge of the cliff so that he sort of bounces upwards, but also is presumed dead because he's over the pit. Um, it's a little bit random what the uh, knockback for the Bacoblin will be. And the positioning is very, very precise. So you saw Jace tried it there, but the Bacoblin was not quite uh, far enough out and was not considered dead. So he just did a uh, finishing blow to the Bacoblin's coordinates and it ended up boarding out. TLO is not even going to try the extending blow. I just quickly want to say, folks, before you get this wrong, not Twilight Princess is up next. There is the Wind Waker SD, which is 350. There is some um, Spirit Tracks, which is like, uh, not Spirit Tracks, there is uh, Phantom Hourglass, which is like 315. And there is mm -hmm. TPHD, which is like 325. And then we get to TP, which is sub 3. Or 252. Is pretty, 254. pretty quick. Yeah. So yeah, get your start. Get your frags right, Chad. Jesus. So Jim saved at the first statue in Skyview and died to the keist at do what we call a bit warp. So I mentioned this a little earlier, but a bit warp is going to take our coordinates from Skyloft and apply them to the Skyview map that Jim just saved on. So he's going to be able to teleport to the latter part of the dungeon and skip both small keys that you're normally supposed to gather. It's skips roughly two thirds of the dungeon. And just one more note about extending blow. Um, it's usually the kind of trick someone tries once and then you go and do your backup strat. In a harp run, it saves actually about a minute 30. So it's a bigger deal in harp than it is in any percent where it only saves about 30 seconds. Um, so sometimes people will retry the extending blow in harp runs by reloading the area. But in a race setting, you probably just want to give it one go and then continue. Uh, the big difference comes because in harp runs, you don't have to come back to this area. Whereas in an any percent speed run, you have to make a second trip through the deep woods. And so... Um, if you get the extending blow in a harp run, Jace here is doing the bit warp backup, by the way, which is kind of fun. If you get the extending blow in a harp run, you can skip all the phi text in front of Skyview Temple. You can skip pushing down a log. You can skip the goddess cube text that you get when you go back to the sky. So that all uh, can be skipped if you get the extending blow. If you don't, you have to watch all that. So that's sort of where the extra minute comes from. And yes, so in the current any percent route, we actually are able to combine Skyview 1 and Skyview 2 into a single visit. So you might think that would make extending blow more worthwhile, but uh, you still have to make two trips to the deep woods. So it's still the same idea in any percent as it used to be. Extending blow is still about 30 seconds. And yes, actually, I did try a blindfolded run of this game once. How far did I got you get? To the wing. I got to the wing ceremony. <laughs> well, Turns out it's really hard to fly the bird when you're blindfolded. Oh yeah, I actually remember part of that. Oh, that has been... Oh, this goes a while back. This is like six or seven years ago. Yeah. Oh boy, yeah. Those were like my... Those were my beginnings in the speedrunning community. Yeah. Then if you st keep up these puns, I will have to ban you, Jesus. <laughs> He's not wrong, though. You do just have to wing it. <laughs> All right, so Jim's got the beetle. Um, Fi's going to tell him how to use it, which he'll probably appreciate. Um, he'll be on his way to the boss door next. Uh, on Jace's stream, you'll see he's running over here to um, reload the main room because when you bit warp into a room, 
not everything is loaded. It's only partially loaded. So in particular, the rope leading to the boss door is not loaded. So we have to reload the room in order to load that rope to get to the boss. And we want to do it by running to the other side of a gate that would normally be closed. So we have to go into this room with the Staldra and kill it in order to re-exit the room and reload the main room. See TLO going into this Stalfos fight too. The Stalfos fight is pretty much the one place left in the Harp Run where you can really use a shield. So TLO skipped the adventure pouch, so he's going to have to do it without. It's not too hard to do without, but it is a little bit slower than using the shield. Shield bashing in this game is actually pretty strong. You can shield bash a lot of things that you wouldn't normally think a shield can handle, like laser beams and fire. So... Getting a shield is definitely worth it in any percent, but in a harp run, there's really only this one spot. So if you watch Jace's stream here, you're going to see the shield versions of those strats. And meanwhile, Jim's heading into the Girahim 1 fight. Deesh has made it into Skyview. I don't know if we want to swap some runners out here. Oh yeah, sure. Um, so who's actually on the back foot of these four right now? Uh, Deesh is furthest behind. Deesh is furthest behind, and then it's probably Jace is, Jace, right? is next. Yeah. All right. So let's put in Floa and. Laplock. Sounds good. And boom. There we go. Do some quick updating. Oh, yeah. Nice slideshow on Flora's part. Great. I guess we are not taking Flora. It's as laggy for you, probably, right? Yeah, it's a little laggy, yeah. Okay, let's not get Flora. <laughs> let's get Dr. Sensei Hugo instead. Let's see how his stream goes. There we go. That's way better. Looks good. All right, Jim got through Gearheim without much trouble. So he'll be heading to pick up the Ruby Tablet, which gives us access to Elden. Elden is where we're going to see our first RBM. So I'll start explaining that trick in a little more detail once Jim gets closer. Kilo's heading to the boss room. Hugo's not too far behind. It's, I'm kind of shocked, actually. It seems like Dr. Sensei Hugo is actually using a camera to, like, capture the game. Yeah, I think that's right. And the capture is absolutely outstanding for that. Like, holy. Yeah, you almost can't tell. It's just the, uh, the entire thing is the lighting. That's, like, what gives it away. But besides that, that's awesome. All right. So let's uh, keep an eye on TLO's stream. I can explain some of the gear heme strats a little bit better. So his first phase is pretty standard. You want to lure his blocking hand out of the way and then do a spin attack stab combo. You can essentially input the spin attack and while that's happening, input the stab. And it sort of buffers the stab to happen immediately after the spin attack. Once we reach the second phase, there's actually a strategy that lets us shave a cycle off the second phase here. Uh, but it's a little tricky to get, and I think TLO missed it. You essentially have to do two spin attacks and a stab during one cycle, which is a little bit tight timing-wise. Girahim has three attacks he can do. He can uh, do a dash attack, where he holds the sword behind him for a minute and then charges at you. He can do a teleport attack, where he teleports either in front or behind you. 
and he can do a dart attack. The dart attack is the one where we can't hit him, so we want as few darts as possible. Uh, people, when they run gear him, they'll say, oh, I got a five dart fight, which is pretty bad. Average is about two. It is possible to get a zero dart gear him fight. I've run this game on and off for about seven and a half years, and I've gotten it once. Epilogue with the nice uh, backflip off the spider into the void there. Epilogue is heading into the Stalfos fight. He's also using one of the slower languages. Wait, is he playing in German? I don't believe so. Dr. Sensei Hugo is playing in German. But no, he's got, ja he's got Japanese, I think. No, Dr. Sensei Hugo is playing in German. But what's Slaplock playing in? That seemed like French. Ayuda's Spanish, I think. Yeah, Hugo's got Japanese, doesn't he? No, German. Yeah. Am I blind? Laplog is playing in French. French. And Dr. Sensei Hugo is playing in German. Yep. Yes, you are blind, Andy. <laughs> I, I am apparently blind, it's true. <laughs> You're doing a great job for not seeing anything. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right, so Jim is about to start heading to Elden, and he there's one reverse bit magic trick we're going to do on Elden, and I'm not going to tell you what it does. I want you to be able to see what it does if you've never seen it before. So we're going to start start by explaining reverse bit magic again. If you missed the start of the stream, the basic idea of reverse bit magic is it's a way to take flags on Skyloft and apply them to other areas of the game. So there's a section of memory where, uh, which are called scene flags, which control different things depending on the area of the game which is loaded. So a specific flag on Skyloft might uh, control whether a tree has been bonked into or not, but then that flag on the surface might control whether a door is open. So... Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's the flag that you do by slashing the left grave, right? Yes. Yes, we'll be seeing that soon. Cool. So Jim's not doing the RBM yet. He's doing the old bit warp. This bit warp is one of my favorites because it actually takes you pretty precisely into a goddess cube, which then pushes you down through the floor and you fall into the loading zone for the underground section of Elden here. You then immediately take four hearts of fall damage because you don't have the sailcloth. I figured out what happened. The commentary page had not properly refreshed Hugo's stream. Oh. That's weird. Now it's I'm... it's I refreshed the whole page and it's good now. Alright. Weird weird stuff. Sorry about that. No worries. We are back on board. So this digging mitts, this is the fight for the digging mitts that Jim's doing right now. It's possible to kill all those Bacoblins in a single Skyward Strike, but it's tricky to do. So he had just one left over that he had to clean up. Yeah, Sailcloth is skipped in Harp. It's not skipped in any percent because getting the Sailcloth is the trigger for opening a particular door in the Knight Academy that we need in order to um, do Spiral Charge. Oh. So Hugo's, Hugo's having some trouble now getting past this spider. When you first start running the game, getting past that spider is a very difficult trick to learn. I remember when I started learning this way back when, that gave me a lot of trouble. 
And it's a costly place to die because you have to end up doing the entire bit warp to get to the back of Skyview over. I'm curious where Jim is going to do the RBM. There's a little bit of flexibility in where you can do these RBMs. This magma that Jim's talking to right now is a special magma. He sets a flag which allows you to visit Batro's house in Back in Time. That will become relevant later. If you have just sort of a normal file in Back in Time and you try to go to Batro's door, you'll find it's locked. But if you have a file that has talked to that magma, you can unlock that door. Actually, if we look at TLO's stream right now, he's doing this reverse bit magic. So he went into a house during back in time and slept tonight because we need it to be nighttime in order to do this RBM. Looks like Jim's about to do it as well as a different place because he just died. So we're going to run during back in time at night over to this grave. And what you're going to see TLO do is start the file and then push the grave inwards. This is going to cause a cutscene where the shed to Batro's house starts opening. That's going to start playing. But the file will already be loading. And so the flag that is set when that shed is opened is going to be written onto the file that he started instead. And so that flag, that specific flag for pushing the grave in, corresponds to pushing the grave in on Skyloft, but it corresponds to something completely different on the Elden map. And you'll see what that corresponds to once we get to the top. So TLO did that bit from the first statue in Elden, so he's now doing the bit warp. Jim is at the second statue in Elden, so he's going to do this reverse bit magic here. Yay! Let's go for a little sleep. Spam your ZSR snugs or ZSR sleep. Yeah, I, if I am remembering the route correctly, we now sleep twice in any percent. Pork. Maybe three times. Three times. I'm. Well. Depends what version you're running. If you're running Japanese, you sleep four times. If you're running a different version, you would sleep only three. I think. Something like that. Right, so now it's night, and now we go to the graveyard, right? Yep, so if you're watching Jim's stream, he's going to do the same trick TLO did. You have to slash the grave first to be able to trigger the shed cutscene, and then you start the file and push it in. Yep. And here, um, due to um, the region already being preloaded, you now have to reload the area, right? Like, do an environmental... So, yeah, so there's three... So there's sort of three steps to doing an RBM trick. The first is to load the flag into your area. So that's um, that's what Jim and TLO have already done. But this game uses what's called the dirty flag method of updating flags. And so even though we've written that flag onto the file, it's not actually updated in memory until you make some sort of an environment change. So that can be anything from talking to someone to blowing up some rocks, to knocking down a tower, as Jim just did. So some sort of environment change then fixes that flag in memory. And usually, you then have to reload the area in order for the flag to actually take effect. This Earth Temple RBM that we're doing is a little bit different in that we don't need to reload the area and I'm a little bit fuzzy on why, but I think it's because there's a trigger around Earth Temple that is looking for a particular um, flag to be set. And so since that flag is set, then the cutscene will just play. There's actually something wrong on Jim's stream. You'll notice that Earth Temple door is still shut. That door should not be shut right now. Or maybe it should. 
Isn't I'm not like sure. Isn't, isn't like like magically here's, here's, opening? Here's what should happen. When Jim approaches the door, he should automatically get the cutscene taking him into Earth Temple. I'm not sure, but because he did the RBM from the second statue, since we haven't reloaded it, it doesn't look like the door is open. But the door is actually open. Yeah, yeah here so you can see he goes straight into Earth Temple there. And so that particular RBM trick skips having to collect all the key shards to open that door. Now, when TLO gets to the top, you'll notice that during the Magma cutscene, the door is actually open already. And that's because he did the RBM from the first statue, and then he reloaded the area because he had to go to the underground area still. So that'll be the difference there. Jim's doing a little cutscene skip here by Skyward striking the rope and then jumping off the stairs. Link is in air when the cutscene would normally start. So you get to skip the cutscene because Link's not actually on the ground. That was a little close on Jim's stream there. I did talk about health management before. Most of the time, health management means you want to be as low on health as possible. And so you do entire dungeons on two hearts where one false move can kill you at a bad time. So the run can be a little challenging in that respect. Yeah, so if you look at TLO's stream, you'll see that that Earth Temple door is open. And this is extremely amusing because the Magmas are talking about Man, how can we get past this locked door into the dungeon? And the door's just open. Alright, so... Lepilogue is about to do the reverse bit magic trick as well. Hugo has made it past the spider and is about to do the Stalfo spike for the beetle. Yeah, the, the Magma conversation ends with one of them saying, can't we just dig our way into the temple? And he says, just saying. So they just dig their way into the temple, but that's your hint to go and collect all the key shards. Even though we don't need to do that. All right, Jim has obtained bombs. Bombs are a great item in this game because we can use them to die. So that corrupt file that we had to activate bit before is now pretty much obsolete because almost always it's going to be faster to die using the bombs. Is opening that one door the only use for the beetle in this run? It depends on whether you want to do a reverse bit magic here in Earth Temple and we... I actually want to keep an eye on Jim's stream right now because he's reaching the point where he has to decide whether or not to do that bit ma uh, that RBM trick. So if he goes to the center platform, he's going to be doing the RBM trick. If he goes to the right here, he's doing the long way. It looks like he's going to do the RBM. So this one actually uses the same flag we just saw, the pushing the grave in to open the shed flag. So you'll see him do the exact same bit trip that he did to open the Earth Temple. But since the file we're, we're loading is saved in Earth Temple, we're now going to apply that flag to the Earth Temple area rather than the Elden area. And again, this particular RBM was found about four hours ago now. Yeah, it's interesting the way the flags are set up in memory. Some flags happen to be particularly useful. Uh, one thing that determines how useful a flag will be is where it's located on Skyloft. 
So in particular, outdoor Skyloft during the day is currently an area of back in time that we cannot load without crashing. So any flag that is that exists in daytime Skyloft out of doors is something that we can't use to do an RBM even if we would like to. So it's kind of uh, a bit of a, a lottery, like, is the flag we want easily accessible in back in time or not? And I say easily accessible because there are some flags which are accessible but would take longer than actually doing the thing normally. For, ex for example, Batro has a flag for uh, getting the 70 gratitude crystal reward. So there on Jim's stream, he has the platforms up. That's what this Earth Temple RBM does. It raises the platforms that you normally have to use the rolling boulder to push the pegs in for. So that saves having to go the long way around by rolling the boulder through the side lava tunnel. It also skips the peg skip trick. This, we're, we're not completely sure on exactly how much time this saves, but it's around maybe 10 seconds. The actual biggest time save from this is that we don't have to use four bombs in the side tunnel. So we still have five bombs, which allows us to do a quicker sort of um, bomb refill before the Scaldera fight. All right, looks like TLO is going the long way around. He is not going to do Temple RBM. So you'll be able to see what Jim managed to skip. And again, keep in mind that this, this section is going to look really long and it's going to look like the RBM skips a lot of time, but actually doing the RBM itself also takes a fair amount of time. So it looks like a big time save, but it's really just a smaller time save. Yeah, so the one flag we would really like to find on Skyloft is 704. That corresponds to the door to Hylia's realm being open. And if we can open that door, then we can skip everything after Imp 2, including the Song of the Hero and the Skykeep dungeon and the Skyloft trial. We can also skip getting the bow, because the only thing we actually need the bow for is in Skykeep. So yeah, that's, that's the flag we'd really like to find on Skyloft. But currently, we just don't know if anything sets that flag. It's not even a flag that we can't get to, we just don't know what it is yet. It might just be unused. It does seem like like people have been searching Skyloft pretty thoroughly for flags, so it does seem like that if it was used, we would have found it by now. But who knows? It might just be something pretty obscure that we haven't thought of yet. The, the, one of the main goals of this community race is to showcase the new RBM glitch. This was set up after that glitch was found. And shoutouts to Trezco for pulling that together at somewhat short notice. Hey, sure thing. I was happy to see your showcase of this. You know, as TLO just got peg skip in Earth Temple. That's the old skip for that little section. Jim's going to do the Scaldera fight here. Scaldera's hitbox for his eye is really obnoxious. Uh, it's difficult to hit. So we have sort of a quick little strat here where you hit him once in the first phase and then knock him backwards and throw another bomb in and that makes the eye a little bit easier to hit because when the first section of rock crumbles off, the second section that crumbles off is always right above it. So it makes it a little bit easier. This strategy, if done well, will also finish the fight in three cycles. So we in the community call it a uh, tricycle. 
and Jim just missed it. No, Jim, no. That last Skyward Strike is trickier than it looks because you have to be at the right distance from the eye. It's not enough for just the Skyward Strike to hit it. You have to also hit it with the sword. So that was very close, but didn't quite get that last hit correctly. Also, why three cycle? Uh, uh, why tricycle instead of three, uh, three cycle? Like why tricycle instead of three cycle? Because there's this lovely gif of Scaldera riding a tricycle. Okay, here, Chad. Enjoy the madness. This is now officially a tricycle stream. I'm very excited. All right, we'll see TLO going to Scaldera now. We'll see if we can get, uh, if he can get a tricycle here. Uh, that gift, by the way, is due to Hero Fred. I did not make that gift. Amazing. It is amazing. All right, Jim is going to be heading off here to the final area in the Harp Run, the Laneru area. Um, but he's going to do something a little bit interesting first. This is slightly different than old Harp Runs. And Laneru is going to be, well, you'll see. So he's going to save at this statue and activate back in time. Uh, in old Harp Runs, you would fly to the goddess statue and place the Amber Tablet. But we want to do a little bit of file manipulation here. So we're going to activate back in time because in back in time, we can do both a bit save to teleport back to Skyloft and do our file copying at the same time. So it's a little bit more efficient to do it that way. So you'll see Jim here copy file one to file two. And the reason we're doing this copy is because now we have a save, which is in Elden and has that magma flag set. Remember, I mentioned that one particular magma was a very important magma. The reason is we need this safe set up correctly to do the next RBM that Jim will be doing. Yeah, Lanero would be a little bit different. So if you're familiar with harp runs from before, you'll notice some small differences. Looks like TLO did not manage to get the tricycle either. So he's sort of doing... The, the problem with the Scaldera fight is if it doesn't quite go right, then you're stuck sort of ad-libbing a little bit. What you want to try and avoid is Scaldera walking all the way to the top like he is now and then rolling all the way back down because that takes a lot of time. But it's he has certain health thresholds which cause him to do that and it's kind of tricky to try and avoid those thresholds. All right, time for the incredibly long Lanaria section. Yes, I hope you're all ready for a nice five hour. Oh, did I say hour? I think I meant minute, Lanayru section. Do we even need five minutes? <laughs> eh, probably not. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Now Lanayru actually, like, was completely cut into pieces. <laughs> yeah, so, so, not just in a harp run, but in the context of an any percent run, the RBM glitch we found, it has a few skips in Elden. It has one sort of skip in, in Farin. Poor Lanayru got torn to shreds. That area is just unrecognizable now. Yeah, Lanayru. No, Lanayru. Ah, Lanayru. All right, time to get going. Let's fly over, save at the mine, and yep. then uh, do some bitch shenanigans. We'll keep an eye on Jim's stream here. He's going to be the first one to get there. Yellow's not too far behind. 
Uh, looks like Hugo is heading to Elden to begin all the RBM shenanigans. And Lepilog's in... Uh, in Earth Temple. And yeah, one of the cruelest jokes about this new glitch is it saves so much time, it breaks so much stuff. But it all it doesn't skip anything in the Song of the Heroes section. Not yet. Oof. Also did you just right. say did you just say keep an eye on Jim's stream? Yes, we're watching Jim's stream here, so here. he just saved, he's gonna blow this, up. This one. Take this one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See, Trez is just so helpful. I hope you found it. All right, so here's the the RBM for Jim. He's uh, we are going to bonk into a tree with file two selected. I hope. Yep, there we go. Because we saved it in that specific location with that magma talk to, that opens this shed. It also unlocks the door to Batro's house. So we're going to enter Batro's house during uh, Back in Time. Which looks pretty silly. So notice Jim went back to the splash screen. That actually loads the data from file 3 in, so he opened file 2 to re-unlock the door from Batro's house. Alright, this is a very scary cutscene. Batro's going to get us. So what's going to happen is he's going to talk to Batro. And this is Batro's sort of introductory text where he asks you to find gratitude crystals for him so that he can become a human again. When the last text box of this conversation ends, a flag is set. And so he's going to scroll through the entire conversation and on the last text box, He's going to both clear the text and start the file at the same time. This will write the Batro flag into his file. And again, I'm not going to tell you what that does until we see it. Because this one is the big one. So if you've never seen this before, get ready. If you have seen this before, get ready anyway. Because this is going to be fun. We have to talk to this robot. Remember what I said earlier about updating the environment? Talking to that robot robot updates the environment. So we've done some bit shenanigans. We talked to that robot, and that robot whispered a secret to us. Robot, robot. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, that's what he said. And so when he goes to land in Lanayru, you'll notice, hey, there's a statue off there in the haze in the fog. <laughs> That's what the robot told us. He told us what that statue was. And so now we can land in the Temple of Time area. And you see this giant pile of rubble on the left. That's supposed to prevent us from getting here until after we beat the third dungeon, Lanayru Mining Facility. Instead, we go in the back door of the mining facility, and then we leave. And we've got the harp. Jim's done. That's G the end. GG. <laughs> clap. Since this is such an anticlimactic ending, here's the clap game. Yeah, we got we got a clap for him. Clap, clap, clap. <laughs> one, one fun fact about that that uh, RBM that isn't shown in speedrun because you're too busy running to the dungeon. But the gate of time that normally blows up in the cutscene after Harp, um, that gate of time is actually intact. You can go and look at it and, and try to do stuff with it, but it's just an inert object. And yeah, Jace is probably done now too, or close to done. Oh, so actually let's get him in. Um... Yeah, let's get Jim in here if we can.
And let's get Jace and Dijin, because I believe those two should be closer to the finish than Laplock and Dr. Sensei, right? Yes, I think that's right. And actually, since Jim finished, uh, let's switch him out as well. Let's see how Floa does if he's still lagging like crazy. Oh, yeah. Looks promising, Floa. Looks great. That Jace is done now, too. We're almost done. Dish is exiting Earth Temple, so he's going to be done pretty soon. TLO's doing the last RBM, so he'll finish soon. I am not completely sure. Huh? Oh no, hang on. All right, so Jace just exited D cutscene as well and got his very own heart finishing in second place with a one with a 106 52 gg to him gg gg to jace indeed um i'm not entirely sure why it's showing uh jim's time for lap right now that must be in a, a little buck here sorry about that yeah i had a trouble updating that stream as well on the commentary page. I'll look into that. But yeah, Jace and Jim finished. Still hoping the two of them will join us for an interview. Yeah, Jim in particular. Jimnist was the one who found this RBM uh, glitch. So it'd be interesting to hear from him a little bit about how that came about. People always ask how these glitches are found, and I can tell you he wasn't looking for this particular glitch, at least. Tilo's almost done here. He's making his last flight. Yep. I also just swapped in Dr. Sensei Hugo. Um, not sure if it's updating for you. If not, I'm not entirely sure why. Yeah, his stream did not update for me. That's weird. I gotta look into it. That's fine. I can hit refresh. Yeah, so some of the implications of RBM for the percent route, if you're interested, um, it is now possible to do both visits to Skyview in one trip. Uh, and it's pretty funny because you're in Skyview 2, but you still fight Gearheim 1, who's the Skyview 1 boss. And the beetle is in a chest just out in the open. You don't actually have to fight the Stolfos for the beetle. Alrighty. We... GG to Tilo as well, sorry. With a 108.52, yes. just finishing up. Yes. We also, it's possible to do the Ancient Cistern as your second dungeon. It's not faster to do so, however. We do not have to beat the sand ship. The only thing we go to the sand ship for is the bow. We skip the entire sand sea. Uh, and we skip all of Lene Remining Facility, as you just saw at the end of this run. It's also possible to get the claw shots early. So the current Lanayru route is essentially go to Lanayru and get all the items and then leave. Also, no, I'm not responsible for that streaming quality on Floa's end. Um, there's nothing really I can do about it. So, <laughs> uh, yes, we got to deal with it. Um... You're sad that the uh, stuff we're skipping is Lanayu. Well, Mr. Cheese, that's something a TP runner, for example, would never say. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Alright, so if I can point out on Hugo's stream real quick, he's saving at the, temp the statue outside Earth Temple. So he's actually going to do the RBM 
right here outside the temple. And you can do it here, and when you load in after the RBM, you're already in the cutscene trigger. And so if he does the RBM correctly, he'll actually go straight into the dungeon from there. Hey, Tilo. GG. Yo, what's up? Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> I did beat my PB by like two minutes. Very good, very good. So what do you think about this uh, this route now? Uh, the hard route is okay, but the any percent route is pretty cool. Like, I'm a little worried though because I think we do like 10 RBMs or something in any percent, and that's a lot, and we skip like a lot of like dungeon stuff that I kind of like to play out. But for the most part, the route's really cool. Yeah, it's a bit of a trade-off between doing extra stuff in back in time to replace what would be normal gameplay. So, what's your favorite RBM that has been discovered so far? Uh, I, f I forget what, what it actually does, but I really enjoy that we have to, uh, in any percent, we have to set up a file just for like gratitude crystal collecting. We need to collect five gratitude crystals, and then what does that allow us to do? Is that the sand ship dock? It, it's or... actually a couple things. So. The current any percent route actually sets up gratitude crystals on a, an early game file and collects five of them. And the individual grat gratitude crystals on Skyloft have individual flags. So one of the crystals, the one that's in the Loftwing prison, its flag corresponds to the sand ship being docked in the sand sea. And so that's the RBM that skips the sand sea. Um, there's another gratitude crystal in the pumpkin patch, which corresponds to the ancient cistern boss door being open. Uh, and so you can use that to skip the boss key in ancient cistern. And then having five crystals itself corresponds to the silent realm gate in Elvin being available. And that's a particularly important oh. one. That's what lets us skip beating the sand ship. Yeah, I knew it had something to do with Sandship, I just didn't remember. <laughs> Two things to do with Sandship, actually. One docks it, and one lets us skip everything but the boat. Yeah, I'm just really excited that uh, Skyward Sword actually has a significant route change. Because I started running this game in like 2012 or 2013 or something, and the route literally hasn't changed since then. This is the first like major rewrite of the route like ever in Skyward Sword history, so that's really cool. Yeah, there have been small changes here and there over the past seven years, but this is pretty much since back in time itself was first discovered, this is the biggest break since then. So it's it's been a very interesting week in the Skyward Sword community. Anyway, I do have to go uh, do some Mother Di Mother's Day things today. Um, luckily, the race was before all that, but um, so I'm gonna have to take off. The race was super fun. Um, hopefully, Floha fixes his potato. <laughs> Early footage of the Skyward Sword randomizer night. Nice. <laughs> that, that, that's a rough one right there. <laughs> I had to crack that joke. <laughs> well, thanks, Tilo. Congrats on the race. Yeah, super fun. Thanks, guys. Thanks for being here. Yeah, and everyone get in touch with your mothers, if possible. What? <laughs> that sounds wrong. It's Mother's Day. <laughs> I know. At least here in the States. That's actually Mother's Day in Germany as well. But only Germany, pretty much. So, all right. shout out to all our mothers. Yes. You did a good job. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Oh, man, I like Gearheim's rant in French there. We got three people in bit. Let's see. Looks like Deesh is doing the final RBM to get into the Temple of Time area. Lepilog as well. Or er, Floha. Floha is doing the one for 
Elden or Earth Temple, it looks like. And Hugo just made it into Earth Temple. Oh, also I just noticed that the audio is fairly loud, so I tune, I tune it down a little. Should be better now. So if you're a little more curious about what effect this has on any percent, um, there's been enough research done that there's a tentative route available. You can see updated routes for both any percent and harp on the ZSR Skyward Sword pages. Um, there have been, to my knowledge, three runs done of any percent with the RBM route. Um, Gymnast got a 416. His was the first. And for context, that was, I think, 39 minutes faster than his PB and beat the old world record by about 34 minutes. Uh, Jace finished an any percent run at a 417. And I did an any percent run yesterday uh, and got a 455. Dang. But I run the English version. So English is now sub five, which is something I never thought would happen. Augers. Alrighty. So who is sub next, actually? Uh... Deesh is about to finish, I believe. So if you're using a language that you don't understand, it can actually be slightly tricky to know which text box to start your file on. So the easiest thing to do is not look for a particular text box, but instead just count. And so Deesh there actually made a mistake. He missed the last text box. So he has to redo the back in time. It's not quite as bad a mistake as failing a bit warp, for example. Like it's more easy to retry, but you do have to redo all the movement to get back to Batro's house and redo his entire conversation, which can take quite a bit of time. Yeah, it, it looked like actually the Spanish text had one fewer text box than normal. I'm not completely sure I counted that correctly, but I think that's right. So Hugo's trying to do a little trick here where you can skip the cutscene of the rocks blowing up. It's kind of tricky because you can actually blow yourself up. Um, but the idea is to get the bomb far enough out of the crawl space and then enter the crawl space before the cutscene triggers because if you're in the crawl space the cutscene won't trigger. Alright, let's see how Deesh does here. So Deesh had the door locked. That's because the last file he had selected was not the second file that had the special um, flag set in Elden. So he had to select file two and then just try to open the door again. So he's going to get a second chance at the Temple of Time statue there. Hugo's heading in to get the bombs. Hugo's a pretty new runner of this game. Uh, I think he had done like one or two harp runs before RBM was found. So he's doing fairly well for his experience level. Tisha's got to open file one here. The reason the files you are you have selected matter 
is because anytime you select a file during back in time, certain flags are loaded into back in time. So if you have last selected a file that doesn't have a particular door open, then you can't open that door. So you have to make sure you open the right file before you try to go through a door. In addition, Something that looked pretty simple in a lot of these RBMs was going into the house to sleep at night. Even for that, it actually matters which file you have selected when you go into the house. Because we have two files that have the ability to sleep, but one file that does not. And so if you have that wrong file selected when you enter in the house, you won't even be able to... Uh, you won't be able to sleep in the bed, and you're actually stuck in that house. My profile picture is Kina, the uh, girl from the Lumpy Pumpkin. And Deesh has gotten the last RBM. He's just flying to pick up his harp. He'll be done, and I think that's a PB for him. I think it's actually PB for most runners, because most of these runners haven't done a harp run with this route yet. And the RBM stuff saves probably about 25 minutes on this harp category. All right, congrats to Deesh. Yeah, Deesh taking fourth place with a 122.08, which means it's only three to go. So why don't we just switch over to the remaining three? Sounds good to me. I mean, we can do that, right? Let's do some magic and let's switch over to the remaining three. Here we go. The test, did it update this time? It did. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Huzzah. Huzzah. You'll see Lepilog's having the same problem Dish had a moment ago where he had the wrong file selected when he tried to open the door. Christmas is saved. I'm not sure he knows how to fix it, though, so... He's gonna try and head back. Keep in mind, again, this is a brand new glitch, right? So people are still getting used to how these things work, and the big glitches in this game, they take a little bit of time to get your head straight. Yes, this game doesn't have a magic meter, but it does have a bit magic meter. Looks like Floha is throwing his potato computer at Scaldera right now. I think Scaldera is winning. All right, so Lepilog is retrying this RBM to get the Temple of Time statue. He's probably going to be the next one to finish, I think. Hugo, I think, is doing the RBM inside Earth Temple to skip the side lava tunnel. When he exits the door here, you need to have either no file selected or an early game file selected. Because if you exit to nighttime back in time on a file that is, and I think this is right, on a file that has the hero tunic, it will crash. And it's, it's like a hard lock. You have to restart your console. Or if you happen to be playing on a Wii U, you have to literally unplug the console and plug it back in. I believe now Flora's die, uh, stream died entirely. Yeah, Ugh. Galdera was too much for him. Oh boy. For his stream, I should say. Alright, Lepilog has made it into Batro's room, so now he just has to find the right text box 
to start his file on. Looks like Hugo managed to get the Earth Temple RBM. You'll notice here when he heads over towards the platforms, there's a little cutscene that plays. But now he has to reload the room. So this is the third part of that RBM, right? You have to do the bit trick. You have to cause a change, and seeing that cutscene is a change, and then you have to reload the room. So he jumped in the lava there to reload the room, dying and, and continuing reloads the room. And you'll see now that the platforms are up. And so he can continue deeper into the dungeon. All right, let's see if Lepilog gets the right text box. Looks good. When you see the conversation ending in that fade out, you can be pretty confident that you got it done correctly. So we talk to the magic robot. The reason we talk to this robot is again to update the environment. And then flying to the sky and reloading will let us land at the statue. So Lepilogue will be finishing shortly. Floha appears to be ahead of Hugo, if I am reading this particular slide correctly. But it, they're relatively close. Hugo's going to be heading into the Scaldera fight right around the time Floha is leaving. Because there's definitely a hard container on that screen. Lepilog did get the RBM correctly. So you'll notice our, our five finishers thus far have all been under one hour and 30 minutes. The old record for this category was about a 127, if I remember correctly. So you can see just how much time has been cut out with this new glitch. Shoutouts to Floha Stream cracking the 122nd mark on our layouts just because the stream is constantly dying. Wow, that's amazing. We need to get him a new potato. Yep. He appears to be doing the bit save after Earth Temple so that he can copy the file that lets us enter Batro's room. Oh, we got another frame! Another one! I know! Two frames! <laughs> Technology's not ready yet. Alright, so since level lock finished, let's actually switch him out as well. And let's try... <laughs> let's try the Floa Dr. Sensei Hugo thingy here. All right, we got the the camera pointed at the screen stream and the sledgehammer. Yeah, the camera pointed at the screen is is actually pretty good quality. It's better quality than the the slideshow. It's it's amazing how good this looks. Like I'm I'm shocked honestly. He's got to have a, like a tripod for that webcam or something. Yeah. Ooh, now we have a black screen. <laughs> I can see saving in progress. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah, the only way you can really tell on Hugo's stream is that, like you said before, the lighting is different. Yeah, I'm going to have to do a harp run sometime to see how, how low I can get. 
Again, due to text differences, Japanese is the fastest version by about five minutes. Oh, so many frames on Flora's scre uh, screen, I lost count. Oof. Wow. I like that it's during the cutscene. Seems suspicious. I'm gonna proof call him on <laughs> that one. <coughs> He goes in the Scaldera fight. When he does walk all the way up to the top, you have to sort of stand to one side to bait him to roll at you that way and then go to the other side to avoid him. The most annoying thing about Scaldera is that the more damaged he gets, the more erratically his eye moves back and forth. So it gets very, very difficult to actually hit him when he's at pretty low health. And if, you, if the fight goes on long enough and you have to feed him enough bombs, then he'll actually lose all the rocks that are sort of attached to his body. So we, we get what's called the Naked Scaldera fight. Ooh, naked. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's almost there, not quite. And he's, got, he's not gonna make it. He's finished the fight before we lost all the rocks. Good job for Hugo, though. He's he's going to be coming up on the last RBM pretty quick here. And Floha appears to be landing in Lanayru, so... So our last two runners are going to be finishing up pretty quick here. Yep, only a few minutes to go. Floha, don't die again on stream. Don't die again. I mean, Link needs to die, but the stream shouldn't. Floa, no. You're not getting breakfast tomorrow. No, Floa, no. Uh, uh. We're gonna have to uh, recount how many times Link dies in the Any% percent run. It used to be 23. Oof. I think it's gone up. It, yeah, it should be around 30 right now. Well, it's not completely clear because we do skip large portions of the ah, game yeah, where fair. we used to die. Fair. But I think we, we have added enough RBMs in that, that poor Link gets killed more times. And it wouldn't surprise me if we did reach 30. <sighs> Gothic, luckily we don't have Comcast in Germany, so Floor is not on Comcast. <laughs> Shout out to Comcast, by the way. If you want to sponsor ZSR and, uh, yeah, just contact me. Like, you're amazing, <laughs> Comcast. You're all great. Your internet sucks, but you're great. <laughs> I think Floha told me before the race that he was going to YOLO all the RBM. So, so he has not done these RBM tricks before. And the, R the RBM tricks work pretty similarly to other tricks in Skyward Sword in the sense that they're really confusing when you first try to start learning them. But once you get it down, it's not a difficult trick to do. Like the timing for starting the files is pretty lenient for all of the RBM tricks that we do. And so if you are looking at this run and saying, huh, this is a pretty cool speed run. Maybe I should learn it then you should come on over to the Skyward Sword Discord and start, uh, you know, start learning. Yeah, indeed. I just posted the invite to the Skyward Sword Discord in the chat. And yeah, it's not dead anymore. Game is not dead anymore. And, and to give you an illustration of how not dead it is, before this glitch was found, we had two text channels. We now have six. And... I think we've had more messages in the past week than the entire previous history of the Discord. 
So yeah, definitely come on over. There's a lot of people who are wi willing to answer questions. We have good resources both on ZSR and in general for people who want to get into the run. Not just uh, routes and trick explanations, but also we have some saves that you can use for your speed runs. Because not, on not everyone wants to unlock hero mode on their own. Although, if you've not played Skyward Sword casually, I do recommend it. This is my favorite game of all time. And not just because this is how I met my wife. Yeah, they're not far apart. Yeah, they're pretty close. Floha definitely has the lead. He's trying to figure out the right way to get into Batro's house here. And he's got to select file 3. His file setup is a little bit different than the other runners. They had their, their Batro unlocking file on file 2. His is on file 3. Looks like he got into Batro's house, so now he just has to find the right text box. I find this Batro conversation a little bit frustrating because there's like a, f a fake last text box. There's a text box that you think would be the last text box due to the text that's in it, but then he says one more thing after that. So it's like he's trying to fake you out. Now Floha has to attack Batro in some way, which I think he doesn't really know. So normally you would use your sword to slash at Batro, uh, but when you enter that room, you do not have a sword loaded. So if you just try to sort of do that basic thing, you can't actually slash at him. But if you select file one, which is your run file, that will load the sword into bit so that you can then use it to attack Batro. Or as an alternative, you can actually just pull out the beetle and Batro will interpret that as an attack and start his conversation anyway. These are things about the game, casually, that speedrunners never had to pay attention to before. But now we do. So wait, Floa missed the reverse pit magic, right? So now they're pretty much tied. Uh, yes, Floha did not figure out how to attack Batro, so he's been set back a little bit, and Hugo's catching up. That's yeah, like a 30 second difference now. Yep, it's gonna be pretty close between these two. I don't know if Hugo has gotten to practice this RBM, I think he has. So he might, he might manage to get it first try. Yeah, I also found it kind of funny that the beetle is something that Batro thinks is threatening. The basic beetle that we have at this point, at least, moves slower than molasses. It does, however, have the best upgrades in the game. Quick beetle and tough beetle are excellent upgrades. There you go. So Floha has selected file one, so now he has weapons that he can use on Batro. Hugo's running to Batro's house right now. Okay, we got the conversation going. One kind of frustrating thing about these Batro RBMs is that he's really out of the way on Skyloft. Just living on the margins of society way down here. So we're, we're stuck taking this sort of long run. And any percent run actually comes to talk to Batro three different times for three different RBMs. Wow. So we get we get very familiar with him. Everything all right over there? How um How do you change the um flag that 
he actually sets, or is it every time the same and it just so happens that it's like the same? So, I, I mentioned earlier that when you go through a door, it loads data from whatever file you last selected. Ah, okay. And so, if you select the file that hasn't talked to Batra before, you can talk to him for the first time as many times as you want. Yeah, okay. Uh, looks like. Looks like Floha did get the RBM correct. He needs to remember to talk to the robot now. Which he did. That's good. So I think Floha is on track to finish here. Um, there's one RBM we do with Batro, which does not use his initial text. And so for that particular RBM, we have to select a different file which already has five gratitude crystals collected so that we trigger the text corresponding to getting that particular reward. And then that lets us set a different flag. And so in this way, talking to Batro can actually trigger something like six different flags, depending on how many gratitude crystals are on the file that you open his door with. That's awesome. It does make him pretty versatile as far as as flags go. It's like there's so much potential with this reverse bit magic. It's like crazy. It's so crazy. Like, mm -hmm. and it's why we've been so excited for the past week. And it's so sad that like in theory this is also possible in TP and the Windbreaker, but both games do like like. Windbreaker does a full map reload when you do back in time, so it doesn't work there. Mm -hmm. And in TP, um, what was the issue in TP? Um, I talked about this uh, in TP, but... Uh, oh yeah, TP title screen actually kills the active map, so it's not... Of yeah. Any use. So, so the particular way that Back in Time works in Skyward Sword, I mean, it, in general, bit in Skyward Sword is just more useful than bit in the other games. Uh, but in particular for this glitch, it's it's possible in Skyward Sword and, and not in those games. Floha has finished. Congratulations to him. Hugo unfortunately missed the RBM, um, possibly because of the German text instead of other text. Rip. Um, the notes for the route say which text box to use, but that's based on English and, and Japanese text, which are the same. So it, um, I think it was Dish had this trouble before with the Spanish text. There was a different number of text boxes that you had to, had to scroll through. So it's interesting to see how the text differences are playing into this particular thing. I'm not sure Hugo wanted to copy that file in. So, so I, if you notice when he bonked the tree, there was no shed opening cutscene. Um, I believe he's he's copied over the file that he wanted to have, that that magic Elden file. So, so he's going to be stuck here. What he has to do is take um, take his third file and save it on Elden. All right. Um, so since we only have Doctor Sensei, let's give him the one player treatment for the final few seconds and switch him into the one player layout. Here we go. Now you can actually tell it's the camera. <laughs> yeah, now you can tell a little better. There's that slight curvature at the sides. Yeah, he, he is... I think he's just not quite sure what to do right now. And it's understandable because, the, again, this glitch is less than a week old. And so doing these things is very different um, for all of our runners, right? And and some 
you know, the the intricacies of this glitch are pretty pretty complicated. So I think he's going to do what he has to do here. He's returning to the sky. It has to be saved in Elden because then the flag for that particular magma will be part of that save. And that's what will allow the shed to open and him to get into Batro's house. And one thing this highlights is the importance of how your files are set up. Not just your run file, but the other two files you have available too. Our any percent route keeps track of all three files and what particular flags we have to have set to do the RBMs that we want to be able to do. So file three, for instance, is an early game file, which not only lets us act or um, get into nighttime back in time, but it also um, allows us to do a specific conversation with Professor Owlin. And that conversation with Professor Owlin sets the flag which corresponds to the Laneru trial gate. And that's the RBM that lets us get the claw shots early. Um, that early game file, we also write a flag onto it that lets us collect the crystals. And we've already talked about how the crystals have lots of different flags associated to them. So we can dock the sand ship early, we can uh, open the Elden Trial Gate, uh, we can do a lot of different things. So he's saved file three in Elden, but he needs to, to start file one now. If he saves over this file, then he still doesn't have the Elden file. I fear he's going straight to, to Laneru to save over his file, which which will leave him stuck. Nah. nah anyway, if I am to save it, he he needs to keep file three saved in Elden. and then save file 1 in Laneru here at the statue. And then he can do the RBM. He needs both those files. He needs a file in Elden because that has the flag that will let him into Batra's house. And he needs the file saved here in Laneru because that's where we want to apply that flag. In the any percent route, we have our run file on file 1. And then files 2 and 3 are pretty much used to set specific flags that we use for RBMs. I'm, I had mentioned all the crystals on file 3. File 1 ends up being saved in Elden for the same reason we need this save to be in Elden. Um, so that we have access to Batro's house. And so what you'll notice here is when he, when Hugo goes to bonk this tree, nothing's going to open. So I think he's, he's just not sure what to do at this point. Since it seems like Hugo is stuck a little, um, 
I want to suggest that we actually cut the stream here, send you all over to him. And sounds sounds like a good idea. And then give him the rest of the spotlight. Yeah. Although I I don't know, he might he might feel the pressure, so might not be the best idea. Um because this is like a little weird situation for him right now, he has to figure it out, so probably better to not well, make him more nervous. But maybe we can give him just a couple more minutes, it seems sure. he's going back to Elden here, so he might be setting up his saves correctly. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on it, but if it seems like he's going astray again, then yeah, we'll, we'll cut the restream. So I'm not completely sure which file he has loaded. But one of them needs to be in Elden and one of them needs to be in Lanayru. And then he needs to RBM the flag from from Skyloft into the Lanayru file. It doesn't actually matter which one is in file 1 and file 3. Like he can just finish the run on file 3 instead of file 1 and that's fine. But he needs one in Elden and one in Lanayru. All right, let's save in Elden. So, can he just can he just reset here? Uh, like, do back in time here? Or does he need to go back to Lunaria first? Uh, I think he's doing the right thing. He's resetting here. He needs to load the other file, the file that isn't saved in Elden. Yeah. Make sure that's saved in Lunaria, and then he can do the bit from Lunaria. So yeah, it looks like he's got file one saved in Lanayru, he's got file 3 saved in Elden, so this is the right file setup. So he's going to save here, activate bit, and he should be able to do the RBM here. Um, and he <laughs> death warped instead of bit warping. <laughs> Close. Let's try this again. This is, so, so this is actually something that uh, can happen in runs. Uh, there are two different things we want to do when we die, generally. One is activate back in time, but the other is death warp. So a death warp, you kill yourself. Um, you just choose to continue, you don't reset the console, and then that allows you to warp to your last save location and keep all your progress. So for instance, you could like go get a small key and then instead of running all the way back, you can uh, death warp instead. Um, but then, so like most of the time, what we want to do is activate back time. And when I was doing my any percent run yesterday, I actually did a bit warp when I was supposed to do a death warp twice in a row. And that's actually bad because a bit warp does not save your progress, whereas a death warp does. So I had to collect a particular small key three times in my run just because of brain farts. All right, so he's in back in time. He's got the right file set up. He needs to bonk the tree to open the shed. Good. The shed's open, so that's a good sign. Got to make his way over there. One other thing you need to be a little bit aware of and back in time, you cannot stay on the splash screen for too long. Because if you just boot up the game normally and you stay on the splash screen, it'll start playing some very exciting cutscenes. 
And that still happens in Back in Time. If you're in Back in Time and you're on this splash screen for too long, it starts playing those cutscenes and that ends Back in Time. So you want to do your movement as efficiently as possible, but you can't stay on the splash screen for too long. All right, we're in the right conversation here. He was here earlier and just got the wrong text box due to the Jap or not the Japanese, the German text. So let's see if he can get the right text box here. I like this text in German. It's good. He needs to have file one selected here. Please select file one. Yeah, that's the last text box when Batro like claps his hand. No, oh, no, oh. no, no, you didn't get it. No. Oh. All he needs to do is activate back in time again and try it again. Because his files are still set up correctly. The thing that really caused him trouble last time is that he copied over his Elden file. His files are still set up correctly, so he just needs to activate back in time, but... He's so close. He doesn't even actually have to save again, because he hasn't modified that save file at all in back in time. I believe in Hugo. He's going to get it this time. This is the time. So, one other little detail about this tree bonk. He's supposed to have file 3 selected, and you'll notice that he doesn't have file 3 selected. Back in time, by default, loads information from file 3 in. So if file 3 is the one that has the flag you need, you don't actually have to select it before taking whatever action you need. If he selects a different file, however, then the information from file 3 goes away, so he would have to reselect it in order to enter Batro's door here. Buffer? Uh, ah. So that was the Elden file? Yep. He's inside, he's got file 1 selected already. Good. This looks good. So so I think he's set up well, he just needs to get the right text box. <laughs> and this is really a good illustration of just how many little things go into each RBM trick that we're doing in this run now. It's these little tiny details that can be the difference between the RBM succeeding and having the door be locked or getting stuck uh, without being able to sleep, things like that. And these sorts of things happen, I feel like, whenever you get memory-based glitches like this. 
Because whenever you start messing with memory in ways in which the game wasn't expecting, things can get strange. Not on file three. Not on file three. Oh no. Not on file three. Yeah, he did the wrong file again. <laughs> Alright, at this point, um Yeah, I think we can we can <laughs> Yeah, it's getting a little eh. So uh, I wanna uh, still say a GG. Yes. Uh, all around us involved he's, including he's been Hugo sorry yeah Hugo's been sticking with it and you gotta give him props for that but yeah it was a good race congratulations to everyone shout outs to Gymnast for uh, first discovering RBM and then second winning this race uh, shout outs to you Trez for setting this up and and Doing the restream? Sure thing. And yeah, thank you all for watching. And yeah, do stop by the Skyward Sword Discord or just, you know, come watch some Skyward Sword runs. We have cool tricks. I want to give a big shout out before we finish to Indy for doing the commentary. It was really informative and great to listen to, so. It is my pleasure. All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll be back with, like, maybe an any percent community race in a few weeks. Until then, check out everything else that's going on on ZSR. And see you back in a few. Night, everyone.